This is Professor Emily Seal here to talk about your supplement for your first assignment, which is um, a great play called The Piano Lesson um, by August Wilson. Now, um, I chose Piano Lesson because August Wilson is one of the greatest authors of our time. Uh, he's often produced and celebrated and um, a lot of I'm not alone in choosing August Wilson as a play to um, read for an intro to theater class. If you Google it, you'll find many, many schools do, and I hope when you sit down to read it that you will grow in your appreciation. Part of the reason I picked Piano Lesson is because while it happens in Pittsburgh, it has a lot about Southern culture in it, which I always appreciate, um, you know, that it sort of reflects our our culture and and helps us wrestle with our own identities and uh, I think it's pretty fun. I have a picture of the textbook there but that's not something that you'll have to crack for today's um, lesson. Of course uh, we'll be working out of the piano lesson by August Wilson. So your assignment, should you choose to accept it, is a two to four page paper. Um, Piano Lesson is available uh, as a Hallmark movie. I've got some pictures there, um, but I would ask that you still buy a copy, a hard copy of the text because you'll be wanting to quote from it. Um, the text is a little bit different from the Hallmark movie, uh, namely some of the harsher language is cut out because it's Oprah and it's a Hallmark. So um, I would ask you to you know, feel free to watch, as I've said, scripts are but blueprints for you know, the end media, the end uh, performance, the end uh, movie, uh, but I still want you to have the text in front of you. And um, uh, so you'll be writing a two-page paper. Now I do ask anytime, uh, for those of you who are new to college, new to this whole thing, anytime a professor says two pages minimum, you want to you wanna break over that two-page limit. You know, you've got a header, this is a dense paper, um, make sure that it is a full two pages. You will not get an A if you turn in a one and a half page paper, so please make sure it's a full two pages there, but no longer than four. So what is a character analysis? It is not just an academic exercise, it is something that um, actors use in order to create parts. So when I was in grad school, my thesis was over Mariah from Twelfth Night. It was over 100 pages of research from the text, historical context, given circumstances, um, analysis as Mariah as a archetype. Uh, you know, all of these things are pertinent. If you're a history buff, feel free to include more of that given circumstances in your paper. Uh, you know, chase what makes your heart flutter. It helps you to portray the role if you were to play it. So um, it's paperwork done by the actor. It is subjective. If we were in an on-ground class, uh, I usually start this lesson by asking everyone to draw a dog and then we'd pin those to, uh, we tape those to the whiteboard and we all get to look at each other's dogs. And there's lots of right answers, right? It's not a trick question. Somebody can draw Snoopy. Um, somebody else can draw a, a stick figure with a circle. <laughs> um, someone else can draw uh, a little baby chihuahua, someone else can draw a big old Great Dane, and it's all a dog, right? And that's part of the reason we pick a naturalistic, a, a realistic, um, po poetic realism play uh, by August Wilson is because there are lots of right answers to you interpreting the character. Uh, it's not it's not a science, and that can frustrate some type A people. They really want uh, more parameters, more um, fill in the Blake Mad Lib style of education. This isn't, it's an artistic exercise. It's you psychologically getting into that character's head. And it's not something, it's something that we do creatively, right? So you imagine this world, you, you get in and you research, but then you also fill in the blanks with your own imagination. Please, please, please don't just Google the answers and give me what the internet says. For one thing, that could be considered plagiarism, and um, if you 
if you take ideas from the internet that were not your own and put them into your own words and cite them, that's okay, but not really the assignment. Um, but if you if you try to turn in what Lit Chart says or Spark Notes says, um, be rest assured that. Uh, the plagiarism detection software will catch that and you'll be receiving a zero for that assignment so please do the hard work yourself get into the play imagine it enjoy it um, and uh, you know I did mention the movie but it's probably going to be a more fun exercise for you if you don't watch the movie if you just read it and get to imagine what these characters are acting like I know that's a hard sell but my two cents um so while it is imaginative it ought to be rooted in the script in the world of the play in your historical research right um, we don't get to just say well uh, a really famous example is uh, you know someone coming in and say well I think you know Richard the third is gay and I'm gonna play him as gay well there's not a lot of to substantiate that in the text you know maybe a fun choice it may be a different take from what other people have done and if that's the director's vision then he can really go with that but for an actor to hijack the process and not root it in the text um, is is really lazy or uh, you need to just find a different project you know so um, read the script read it twice find those nuggets those direct quotes and I really love um, people whose mind work differently and I'm able to see something in the text I've never seen before August Wilson is a poet so there's a lot of room for interpretation so um, I understand some of you have had English classes on the college level and you feel 100% comfortable uh, with citations and such um, but others of you I know this there's not a prerequisite for English so just want to make sure that you're looking I've given you uh, directions for the paper I hope you'll print those off and be diligent about following those but I get a lot of questions about acts and scene numbers um, first of all act and scene are, are not capitalized you may be tempted to capitalize them they're not capitalized but at the very bottom of this quote you can see parenthesis one period one parenthesis period that's act and scenes and um, that's a citation of where that's found in the text so luckily in the version that I have the one that sold in the bookstore every other page has act and scene number so that makes it a little easier and um, please 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 make sure that if your quote is over four lines that you create a hanging indent like I have here um, and that means that everything's indented um, all of those same rules with all MLA start every paragraph with an indentation with a tab uh, every paragraph ought to only be six to twelve sentences um, you know all that typical stuff always writing complete sentences it's gonna be hard because August Wilson's um, slang that he writes in will probably get underlined according to your spell checker that even may try to auto correct it please know that you know I understand that I understand you're not misspelling a word that that is a uh, the quote from the text so um, this is not my first rodeo so if you're new to MLA you can see we have um, in that top right hand corner the page number after your last name on the right side uh, uh, on the left side you can see the uh, your name my name professor Emily seal just one seal not plural seals um, you can see uh, you can put theater 1030 as the subject and then the date in the uh, European style there center your title and then start your first paragraph uh, please don't feel a need to write a big fancy introduction right this is just a two-page paper so go ahead and dive into that content um, and get started right away uh, I know a lot of you are used to sort of heavily um, dictated introduction conclusion blah 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 but uh, this is a very short paper and it needs to be dense and it needs to be um, full of content you're not gonna have that thesis st statement you're not gonna have um, you know this is not a six paragraph essay so try to avoid I know it's hard to reprogram your brain if you've had a lot of English classes but um, you can see uh, 
at the very end of the paper, no need to create a works cited page just for Piano Lesson by August Wilson. I'm, that's the required text for it, so I'm not requiring you to create a works cited page. As I've already said, I don't really want you to use um, lit charts or spark notes. Um, now, I would accept a works cited page if you are doing some historical research, because I think that really can help enlighten the play. and. Um, I don't, uh, you know, you'll see later on in the assignment that I allow you to add pictures. I'm a very visual person. I think visual language is, m you know, hallmark to uh, theater. Um, but I don't require you to cite those pictures. Uh, I know other professors may require you to cite pictures, but I'm just don't see it modeled in, in most of the scholastic work that I'm exposed to. So um, no need to cite your pictures. But if you want if you need to create a works cited page for those historical references, by all means do that. Give credit where credit is due. But um, the majority of you will not need to create a works cited page because it is your own thoughts and you're analyzing, we're all analyzing the same text. So I don't need to know your, you know, uh, citation for the text. All those same things that are used to, don't try to get creative in your formatting. Just leave, you know, if you're at a Motlow computer, you log in. So Microsoft Word, the de the default is going to be 12 point font, one to one and a quarter inch margins. Just leave it. Don't try to get um, fancy with it. Please don't um, get creative and trying to meet your uh, your you know page limit. That's really a short paper like this. I can't imagine that it would be. But double space, 12 point font, uh, whatever the default it is fine. Of course, academic standard is Times New Roman font. So you're welcome to that. Um, hopefully this has been a little mini review. Hopefully this is things that you're already being exposed to. But I know for some of you, you're back to school for the first time in a long time, or you um, maybe you're used to writing in a different guideline style, such as uh, APA or Turabian. And it can be a little bit confusing to switch back and forth between formatting. So just a little mini English lesson there. Oh, August Wilson. This man's got some soul force. Um, you can see there that his complexion is lighter skinned. He's he's mixed. His father was German and his mother was African American. Um, August Wilson uh, grew up in the civil rights era. He identified heavily with um, the Black Panther movement and um, the uh, Malcolm X and a lot of these uh, really meaningful civil rights discussions and he set about to write the african-american experience in america as it was left out of the history books and it's hard for us maybe in our modern time to understand that how um, edited history was and how what was taught in school uh, neglected a lot of minorities and minority stories um, he was accused of plagiarism. His teacher thought there's no way that he could be as good of a writer as he was, and he quit. He quit formal education, and I'm sure when he won his Pulitzer Prizes uh, for drama, including a Pulitzer Prize, he won for piano lesson. I hope he mailed them to that English teacher who thought that he couldn't possibly have written it. Um, he's very clear about the fact that he has a mission. He's using art uh, to preach. Uh, he wants the representation of blacks in America and um, he's unapologetic about that, about his being work, his work being for people of color, by people of color. And um, he has a great essay that was published called The Ground on Which I Stand. And he um, also is several, there's several documentaries about August Wilson. Uh, like I said, he was very commercially successful, continues to be produced. Uh, he did pass, unfortunately. He's no longer with us, um, but his work lives on. So these are called cycle plays, and cycle plays are where we take one family and we tell their story. Uh, in the case of August Wilson, every 10 years we have a different um, story. And all of them occur in Pittsburgh's Hill District, which is where August Wilson spent the majority of his life, is in Pittsburgh Hill District. Um, it, no, so for like ancient Grecian plays, a cycle play would be telling the story of a family, you know, grandpa 
father and then grandchildren, you know, telling their story in from generation to generation. So that's not necessarily what Wilson does. Um, probably the most famous of the cycle plays is Fences. You can um, rent that movie with Denzel if you've never seen it, Viola Davis. It is a beautiful, beautiful um, play. I, I had the pleasure of directing Fences when I taught high school. It was a very meaningful play for me. Um, but uh, he starts with Jim of the Ocean. He starts at the turn of the century and goes all the way up uh, to the 90s with Radio Golf, where he deals with people of color coming into money and how that affects communities and families. Uh, King Hedley II talks about abortion. Um, Fences, if you've seen it, you know, is about opportunities for athletes of color. So every kind of play has sort of a hot topic that it's dealing with, um, but there's some kind of tropes of what he always does. He always has a spiritual character who has sort of a second sight or an ability to interpret their surroundings. Uh, he always has a child in the play. He writes women well, which I really appreciate. A lot of his women are strong women. They're independent women. Uh, they're relatable and they're fierce. Um, and um, these cycle plays are just a gift. They're hugely helpful. And it, it gives a snapshot of things that we were dealing with in America at each um, plot top, you know, point in time. So one of the major themes of piano lessons is unjust imprisonment, uh, especially among people of color. So he's he's tackling these issues in a way that's more conversational, in a way that's relatable and uh, heartfelt. I have their Not Cosby show um, because Pittsburgh Hill District is a, a rough neighborhood, except when we get up to radio golf. It's um, a lot of these characters are people who are, have a combative relationship with the police and um, are uh, dealing with abject poverty, for sure. And so... Uh-oh. There we go. So, uh, even though this play is... Ah, sorry. Even though this play is uh, set in 1936, we are really telling the story of the past. This was printed in the original Broadway premiere of the play, and I think it's you know very helpful if you want to take a screenshot of that with your phone or something um, to understand the lineage. So we're dealing with Papa Boy Charles, Papa Boy Willie, Papa Boy Walter, then we get down to Boy Charles, Boy Willie, and it can be confusing because their names are sort of similar, which tends to happen in families, right? Um, but this is a story about this piano here that um, was, is, as Bernice says, soaked in the blood of their ancestors, something that they were traded for as slaves, and um, that uh, Papa Boy or Boy Charles, you know, died for, and um, the lineage and the history. I'm going to read you a quote from Whining Boy about the piano. I gave that piano up. That was the best thing that ever happened to me, getting rid of that piano. That piano got so big, and I'm carrying it around on my back. I don't wish that on anybody. So you got to think all that fun of being a recording star. Got to carry in that piano around, and man, did it, I get slow. Got just like molasses. The world just slipping by me, and I'm walking around with that piano. All right, now there ain't but so many places you can go. Only so many road wide enough for you and that piano. And that piano got heavier and heavier go to a place and find out you play piano and first thing you know they want to give you a drink find you a piano sit you right down and that's where you gotta be for the next eight hours they ain't gonna let you up now the first three or four years that was fun you can't get enough whiskey <laughs> you can't get enough women and you don't never get tired of playing that piano but that only lasts so long you look up one day and you hate the whiskey and you hate the women and you hate the piano but that's all you got can't do nothing else. All that you, all you know is how to play the piano. Now who am I? Am I me or am I the piano player? 
Sometime it seemed like the only thing to do is shoot the piano player, cause he, the cause of all the trouble I'm having. Ooh, that's heavy. And they do say whining bore, uh, you know, gets sad sometimes. That's their way of saying it. But piano represents, in my mind's eye, and this is just Emily Seal speaking, that heaviness we carry with us, the ghosts we carry with us as Southerners. Yeah, don't mean to speak for you. Maybe you don't feel that heaviness. Um, but, you know, Boy Willie just, he wants to sell the piano. He thinks we, he can make something out of it. Bernice won't play the piano. Uh, whining Boy gave it up. Uh, how we relate to our history, to our past, to our identity as Southerners can be heavy. It can be heavy, but it's ours to grapple with and wrestle with and struggle with. And I think it's such a poetic way to present the conflicted nature of our past and the continued injustices of America. So um, it's a, a beautiful family story ripe with pain and injustice and, um, you know, it is it is it's heavy as is the piano now this is my little chart <laughs> forgive the typos or or the confusion there we can see bernice uh has a crush on lime and avery has a crush on bernice and they have a little bit of a thing going on but um bernice's first husband crawley died and that's who he she had maritha with maritha's 11 and she's learning to play the piano um, Boy Willie is there in red. That's her brother. He uh, wants to buy a farm and sell the piano. Grace in the blue at the bottom there. She's just a young woman who Doker and Boy Willie try to, not Do Doker, uh, Lyman and Boy Willie try to uh, sleep with respectively. Uh, Lyman, Boy Willie, uh, Whining Boy, Doker, all of these guys have spent time in Parchment Farm. They've all done time and um, Doker is Bernice and Boy Willie's uncle. So uh, hopefully that helps clarify these characters um, and who they are. It's just a you know little drop in the bucket but feel free uh, to lean on my notes. I always, I'm a very visual thinker, I always start with these graphs for myself and, and kind of sketching things out to clarify and keep the character straight as I read. So hopefully it helps you too. So August Wilson often picks a piece of art to inspire him uh, to write the story. This is a, a, a Romier Bearden piece called The Piano Lesson. You can see the mother is leaning over and forcing her daughter's neck. Um, looks almost painful, this lesson. My mother taught piano lessons and uh, I never had the patience to sit and have her henpeck me over my shoulder. Oof. Ooh, I get just thinking about it. Uh, you know, I, I love to listen to the piano to this day. It's still my favorite instrument, but I can not play much more than Twinkle Twinkle Little Star because of that intense, instructive nature of taking piano lessons. Ooh. And um, I already said that. So... It, like I said, it inspired the title of the artwork, inspired the play, and he gives it its namesake. It's not the only. Um, August Wilson often relies heavily on art and music as inspiration for his plays. He was said to have sat in um, public places and written his plays on napkins, <laughs> um, just speaking to his creative process. And he, he started off as a poet, and it really does read more like poetry than um than a traditional Western play. When he leaned on the, the music, um, he would often find two or three songs to include in the production that were written by actual blues artists at the time that he's presenting the play. So uh, Parchment Farm is a work camp uh, outside of Memphis. It's in Mississippi. Uh, Elvis's dad worked there. Uh, there's many blues renditions of Parchment Farm that you can Google and listen to, um, but they all pretty much speak to the, you know, hellacious conditions, the un injustice, the um, 
you know, blood spilled in the unjust, unfair way that it was. Uh, Buka White has a very famous version of Parchment Farm and about his time on Parchment Farm. Um, and as I said, these these places made money for the state, and it was, um, you know, it wasn't slavery anymore, but it was definitely a way that, and, and there are definitely conversations about the injustice of imprisonment of people of color in all of August Wilson's um, works. It's a theme of his works. So, um, Bernice's ancestor, she carved on the piano and uh, she carved pictures of her ancestors, pictures of their struggle, the stories that they went through and, um, you know, just a beautiful tribute to people in poverty being able to make things with their own hands. I love quilts. I love going to people's home and hearing the story of their grandmother's quilt. I love, um, I have a quilt that my my grandmother made out of my mother's old dresses and uh, there's just something so special about having that piece of history and uh, it being uniquely to your family that's that's really cool I've already talked about the heaviness of the piano how the piano represents the uh, heritage of the family and it's really central to the story this has nothing to do with pianists. <laughs> now we're getting into uh, the questions that you'll be answering. So it can be sort of tempting when we get these questions to think, uh, I have to exhaustively answer all these questions. No, I'm going to give you these as sort of a, um, a guidepost, and you can print these off. They're in the shell, the um, bright space shell there. You can see the directions for the paper. But if if your character, if you don't have a full six sentences to talk about it, feel free to merge the questions. Feel free to skip a question if it doesn't isn't pertinent. Um, you know, this is a loosey goosey assignment. I want you to try to answer at least three or four questions, but don't feel like you have to exhaustively cover the list. So you'll pick one character. You may choose Bernice and just write your character analysis over Bernice. Uh, maybe you really like Boy Willie. You, something about him uh, tickles your fancy. You could even do one over Maritha, even though she has, you know, just walk on parts. You'd have to be more imaginative with those. But you're going to read and reread the play, mining for details about these characters. And here are the questions you want to kind of focus on. So the first question is what does my character say about? him or herself. So do they say, you know, I do not suffer fools, <laughs> uh, then you would you would want to include that. This is what they think about themselves. Um, you can also say what the playwright thought of this character. You know, when they first walk in for the first time, August Wilson often gives us a little mini quick snapshot of, of who this character is. Uh, feel free to include that. What do other characters say about my character? And that's often a more dependable source of information rather than what we say about ourselves. What do other people say about us? So, um, you know, like I said, you'll use direct quotes uh, if you want to and put that citation, even if you don't have a direct quote, if you found it on a certain page number, uh, then you would want to say, okay, I found this on Act 1, Scene 2, that um, Bernice called Boy Willie a fool, you know. <laughs> whatever it may be. Now you don't have to choose every single quote. This is not one of those things where I'm going to sit there with a red pen and say, oh, well you missed the quote on page 47. Um, this is you interpreting that character and saying, okay, it tells me that I would play this character this way because Bernice says this about Boy Willie, right? It's a means to an end. So what's my motivation? getting right into that group theater question we asked last time. Um, are they after money? Are they after love? Are they, uh, those are usually the big two, you know, mon money or love, but there are other motivations. Uh, and then how do their behavior support your idea that that's what's motivating them? As I said, most common too. How does my character evolve? Do they have any big aha moments throughout the play, right? Any time that they act out of character and um, 
you know, usually the main character changes, maybe a secondary character changes throughout the play, but there will be characters who don't change at all. And feel free to either skip this question or just simply say, this character does not change, right? Um, I would say Doker doesn't change, right? We start at the beginning of the play, he's he's the homeowner, he was the railroad cook, he was he's salt of the earth, he tells the stories, he gives a sense of family history, um, and you know, it's an, at the end of the play, he's still doing the same thing. So. so this is the biggest question for sure, and this is the one that I said you might want to do some historical research. Um, please don't just make generic statements like back in the day or in old timey times. Uh, this is a specific snapshot. And as we said in, in the last lecture, um, Stanislavski talked about the importance of the details, right? The details. And, and maybe your character doesn't have a lot of familial details, but maybe you can infer okay based on the kind of mother she is we can infer that her mother was this way or um, you know it doesn't say what her vocation was but I can imagine at this time in this place she was probably doing such and such for money right so um, this makes us who we are our our context with which we live our lives so so this is a nuance how does your character relate to the other characters? How do you think your character feels about them based on the way they treat them, right? If, if the other character walks into the room, does your character just walk out the room? Well, that's a pretty good indicator, right? Do they ever lose their temper with that person? Do they ever kiss them? Do they ever, um, you know, what do you think is going on? And once again, this is a, you could write an entire four page paper just itemizing how your character feels about every single other character in the play. And that's maybe not pertinent. Maybe just pick two or three characters. You see a unique way that they relate to the other characters. So now this is the last question and it's not, it doesn't, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But if you are like me, a very visual person, then feel free to include a picture of who you, when you read the play, imagined. Please do not just include a picture of the Hallmark movie. I've already seen it. Uh, please do not just Google the name of your character and include that picture, right, from a production that you've already seen. You only, you know, you don't even have to do this question if you don't want to. And I'm asking that you write two full pages and any pictures be in addition to that. Right, but it helps me to see what you're thinking because a visual language is a huge way that we communicate, especially in the um, in the theater world. So, and you can see Samuel L. Jackson was in the original Broadway cast. Um, lots of great authors. Don't feel like you, um, you know, don't whoever you see is what matters to me but please don't just include a picture from the Hallmark movie I don't I don't need to see that I, I'll see lots of these and um, I you know I've watched the Hallmark movie too so uh, this is not a required question it's just if if you're a visual person it may help you to include that so I hope this has given you some clear guidelines and some um, general ideas as I said it is a loosey-goosey assignment and more often than not, people are trying to make it more than what it is, and that's why they get thrown off, and that's why they ask me a hundred questions. Um, make sure that you're reading the text closely, that you're using quotes from the text to support your argument, and that you're making big decisions um, based on the historical context, that you're empathizing with these characters, that you're getting into their heads and imagining what it might be like to be um, who they were. So in the imagination of the great August Wilson. And if you don't understand everything, if there are some things that go over your head, just know that August Wilson writes like blues music. He writes like jazz. It's poetry, it's artistic, it's not meant to be dissected and understood completely literally. So um, I hope you enjoy this assignment. I hope it expands your mind and helps you empathize um, as an exercise. As always, thank you for listening.